And the Colossus of Ruz was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The bronze sculpture was of the Greek sun god Ilios, and the Rhodians chose Ilios as their patron because Rhodes Island is blessed with 300 days of sunshine every year. Like, Rhodes is warmer than North Africa in the winter. The Colossus of Rhodes was a real piece of work. Standing taller than a 10-story building. To compare, comparing to this uh, wonder of the world, this titanic bronze statue, the other six wonders of the world were pathetic. Nobody wanted to party in the creepy mausoleum of Holiconosis. And how about that statue of Zeus with the celebrated marble veined cock? Mm. The um, nothing on earth outweighs bronze testicles the size of crusader cannonball. The Goths were to so turned off by that so-called wimpy wonder temple of Artemis at Ephesus. This wasted the whole place. King Croesus had built the temple of Artemis as a public relations gimmick to grab trade away from the greedy merchants of Judea further north, Ephesus, Temple of Artemis. But the Goths didn't buy it. They wasted it instead. These so-called other wonders of the world don't really ring your bell, do they? Well, okay, you know what? A few people have heard about the pyramids of Egypt and the uh, Nebuchadnezzar's hanging gardens in Babylon. But it was the Colossus of Rhodes. We're talking 32 meters tall. 100 feet tall. 10 story buildings tall. It became the outrageous freak monument. And as they say in France, the Paris de Resistance <clears throat> of Rhodes. The dazzled wannabe citizens of antiquity. Freak monument. Outrageous. And the Colossus was a bold testimony to the Golden Touch Island, Rodos Stirodi, gone wild with prosperity, political savvy, Cicero's 
a school of speech. I mean, there is an island that has lots of pebbles on the beach, you know. You can come in there, eat rocks, and then, you know, become eloquent. The Colossus of Rhodes. I mean, like it was the Eiffel Tower. of the time. The first artists and engineers of Rhodes took 12 years to do the preparatory work for casting. Then Chares of Lindos, beautiful Lindos, can walk to the Ganesh cave in 90 minutes from Lindos. Yes. You know where it is. Yeah, Char Charace of Lindos, uh, he then cast the 10 story bronze colossus. We're talking 280 years before. You know who stirred up everything in the Eastern Mediterranean? Knocked over the, the money changers? That thing. Okay, all right. Hmm. Yeah. Well, they got the bastard up. Bestride the harbor in Marmaris, the tiny one. Stood there, having ships sail in and out between his legs for 56 years. Russ didn't get it. The earthquake, yeah, A big one. Jeez. Cracks forked across behind the knees. In the Colossus collapsed as backwards into the sea in 227 before uh, <clears throat> the Colossus made this biggest splash in bronze sculpture history. Yes, the innumerable thousands, tons of bronze came tumbling down that faithful day and the inorganic <coughs> body parts of toppled Helios disappeared, abandoned. At the bottom of the harbor, wasn't it? Surely less than amphibious. For 900 sub Mediterranean years. To make a longer historical note, way too long. A Saracen scrap metal merchant purchased and shipped the bronze remnants of the Colossus to a theatrical agent from Damascus, a Palestinian. This enterprising uh, Think Big Dr Jew theatrical empresario had the body parts loaded on 980 camels. Check it out. This is true. And since these camel caravans humping in every direction. Mm -hmm. 
The feet of the Colossus made a big impression on the wet, wet banks of the Nile. As far as Luxor, his head headed to Persepolis. High class Persian scene that was. His uh, titanic butt was last seen taking a break on the remnants of Noah's Ark on the Mount of Ararat, you know, north of Ezraim before the uh, Persian border in eastern Turkey where the people are rude and you want to get out of there as soon as you can just hitchhike through, okay? I've done it eight times. Yeah, this uh, Damascus dude, yeah, he, he took the uh, remnants of the Colossus of Rhodes Uh, the twisted and wasted uh, seventh wonder of the world directly to the people in the most fabulous antiques road show of antiquity which was one was antiquity a long time ago don't worry about it. Yeah, okay, but, you know, where, where the danger came in, and this caused many deaths, was when Safa, pirate, hijacked the colossal bronze 5 meter 20 foot long clock as it was passing by on a ship towards Damascus she, mm -mm, she, she, she took that otherwise she couldn't take more would have sunk, sunk her ship and might have scratched her full leather outfit. You know. Um, Sappho the Manic mounted the 20 foot frick onto the bow sprit of her flagship called the Butch Ramrod. Whoops. Uh, man, as a dire warning to any gender ref uh, confused Romans, you know, who controlled the whole scene at this time in this part of the earth, mm -hmm. the lesbian pirate used this sadistically huge bronze prick as her bow sprit to ram attack Roman galleons transporting Rhodian pottery for the last time to Sponge Island Biscopi and Santorini mm -hmm. yeah the Butch flagship punctured enormous gashes in every wooden sailing ship, unfortunate enough to cross her wake within sight of the Ottoman coast. She was known as the Terror of Anatolia. Oops. And as the boats of her enemies sank, she would get out her loud hailer 
and shout at the drowning Edicenians, Roman centurions, Tripolites on their last trip, and Chovians, and those from the island of the Sardinians, and the Tuna Phoenicians all went down. Yeah, she shouted, My colossal cock is a di titanic tat. You know what I mean? A titanic fuck, really. To remember you straight scumbuckets. Huh. Well, obliv uh, oblivious to these fascinating historical footnotes that just seem to be somewhere in the wa wavelengths. I don't know where they came from. Cleopatra kisses my neck. <laughs> and tongues in my ear, purring, cruising to absolutely deserted and forgotten Sponge Island for our hippie honeymoon? Yeah. Cleopatra is from Melbourne, Australia. As a teenager, she sailed from Australia to England to Hotshot Fashion Studio in London to work as a sultry fashion model called The Luscious Stunner from the land down under. And she's eloping with me to sponge. <laughs> Ooh. 